chocolate is it chocolate black chocolate and cigarettes black chocolate and cigarettes so you've got your cigarettes there yep okay so if you um smell that i just feel like lighting it <laughs> uh -huh. okay so that's like a 10 out of 10 oh yes yeah and your chocolate what's that out of 10 uh, it's not triggering me during the day. It's at night after yeah. dinner that I I can't stop myself. Okay. And is that every night? Yes. Okay. Well, that's an interesting one too. All right. So let me go back to gallery. Um, Anka, did you have something? Yeah. Yes. I have cake. And when I opened the box, um, I felt like I maybe eight out of 10 of eating it, but I just started tapping without saying anything. And now it's like a two or something like this. <laughs> You've been oh. doing the tapping already. I'm oh. just tapping like this because I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So let me see who should we tap with. So someone who um, perhaps every, every day or every certain time of the day, they want to have something might be the best to start with. Um, who wants to volunteer? I'm real thinking. Who? Yeah, Beatrice? Yeah. Pick one. The chocolate for starts. Is that if you can stop me smoking, I would love to. <laughs> That's usually a three session package, but we can have a go. Okay. We can have a go. All right. Oh, hang on my chair here. All right. So let's get tapping. And everyone, I want you to focus on the craving or imagining what you've got in front of you and smelling it and um, imagining tasting it or whatever time of day it is that you want to have the particular thing that's in front of you and what it is out of 10 and write that sub score down. And as you're tapping along, your subconscious might go through um, your own memories of where this began. And if that does, you can follow along with it and um, or you can just tap along and say the words that I'm saying and see what happens at the end. So, so Beatrice, if you just start tapping. So how long have you been smoking? I had my first cigarette at eight. Eight. That's very early, isn't it? All right. It and did you have parents that smoked? Both of them. And who gave you the cigarette when you were eight? I stole it from my father. Uh-huh. And when you saw your parents smoking, how did it make you feel when you were eight years old? I was angry because they didn't want to stop and I knew it was bad at the time. Okay. And so even though you knew it was bad at the time, let's just do tap and talk. So just, let's just go through the points. Even though you knew it was bad at the time, um, and you were angry at them because you knew it was bad for them, but they still smoked. What was it that made you as an eight-year-old go and steal one from dad? Well, I had a childhood trauma at eight, mm -hmm. a big trauma, and I was anxious and not being able to talk about it. And so I felt like hiding with a cigarette like they were doing. Okay. So when you noticed that your parents were hiding with the cigarette, did you notice even as an eight-year-old that they were stressed or you know, that they went to smoking as a, a like a stress relief? Kind of, yes. Okay. And so um, let's just go back here. And let's just start exactly where you are with sneaking up. Even though when I was eight years old. Even though when I was eight years old. I stole a cigarette from my father. I stole a cigarette from my father. I was angry with them. I was angry with them. Because 
I knew smoking wasn't good for them and they wouldn't stop. Because I knew that the cigarette was not good for them and they wouldn't stop. But I also saw that they went to cigarettes when they were stressed. But I also saw that they went to cigarettes when they were stressed. And I had a big stressful event when I was eight. And I was, and I had a big stressful event when I was eight. I accept myself. I accept myself. And my eight-year-old self. And my eight-year-old self. Even though when I was eight. Even though when I was eight. I had this big trauma that happened to me. I had this big trauma that happened to me. And part of me at eight years old. And part of me at eight years old. Thought that having a cigarette might help. Thought that having a cigarette might help. It seemed to help my parents when they were stressed. It seemed to help my parents when they were stressed. I accept myself and this eight-year-old choice. I accept myself and this eight-year-old choice. Even though when I was eight, I had this major trauma. Even though when I was eight, I had this major trauma. And I couldn't talk to anyone about it. And I couldn't talk to anyone about it. And I thought cigarettes might help. And I thought cigarettes might help. So I stole one from my father. So I stole one from my father. I accept myself and my eight-year-old decision. I accept myself and my eight-year-old decision. I started smoking at eight years old. I started smoking at eight years old. Part of me at eight years old thought that having a cigarette would help. Part of me thought that having a cigarette would help. Because I had a big trauma. Because I had a big trauma. And I was really stressed. And I was really stressed. And I saw that when my parents were stressed, they went and had a cigarette. And I saw that when my parents were stressed, they went and had a cigarette. So in my eight-year-old wisdom. So in my eight-year-old wisdom. I thought a cigarette would help me. I thought a cigarette would help me. Because I was stressed. Because I was stressed. Because of this big trauma. Because of this big trauma. Mm -hmm. So let's come back here. So um, I started, I think I stopped and started again at 13. Mm -hmm. When I told my mother about this trauma and she, she yelled at me, not believing. Right. Even though I tried to what use cigarettes to help me when I was eight years old. Even though I tried to have these cigarettes to help me when I was eight years old. And then I went back to them at 13. And I went back to it at 13. When my mother didn't believe me when I told her about the trauma. When my mother didn't believe me when I told her about the trauma. I accept myself and my 13 year old decision. I accept myself and my 13 year old decision. Even though at 13 years old, when I told my mother. Even though when I, at 13 years old, when I told my mother, maybe to get back at her. She didn't believe me. She didn't believe me. And maybe to get back at her, I took a cigarette. And maybe to get back at her, I took a cigarette. I accept myself and these emotions. I accept myself and these emotions. These 13 year old emotions. These 13 years old emotions. Even though I took cigarettes again at 13 to get back at mum. Even though I took smoking again at 13 years old to get back at mum. I was angry at her because she didn't believe me. I was angry at her because she didn't believe me. I accept myself and this 13-year-old decision. 
I accept myself and this 13 year old decision. And these 13 year old emotions. And this 13 year old decision. Emotions. Emotions. I was angry with my mother. I was angry with my mother. She didn't believe me. She didn't believe me. She was angry with me. She was angry with me. She didn't believe me. She didn't believe me. I was angry with her. I was angry with her. Where do you feel that anger in your body? In my throat. And I feel this anger in my throat. And I feel this anger in my throat. Anger at my mother. Anger at my mother. 13 year old anger. 13 year old anger. I had a trauma at eight years old. I had a trauma at eight years old. I told my mother at 13 years old. I told my mother at 13 years old. And I have all this anger and emotion in my throat. And I have all this anger and emotion in my throat. Because she didn't believe me. Because she didn't believe me. And I thank my throat for hanging on to all of this emotion. And I thank my throat for holding on all these emotions. But it no longer serves me now. But it no longer serves me now. And I want to release it and let it go. And I want to release it and let it go. All of this anger in my throat. All of this anger in my throat. Anger at my mother for not believing me. Anger at my mother for not believing me. Anger at my mother for being angry at me. Angry at my mother for being angry at me. How dare she be angry at me? How dare she get angry at me? I told her the truth and she didn't believe me. I told her the truth and she didn't believe me. And she still doesn't. And she still doesn't. And she still doesn't. And I'm still angry at her. And I'm still angry at her. For not believing me. For not believing me. And maybe I'm trying to get back at her. And maybe I'm trying to get back at her. Just like I was when I was 13. Just like I was when I was 13. When I took up smoking again. When I took up smoking again. I wonder if I'm still smoking because I'm angry at my mother. I wonder if I'm still smoking because I'm still angry at my mother. All this anger in my throat. All this anger in my throat. She still doesn't believe me. She still doesn't believe me. That 13 year old anger. That 13 year old anger. That made me turn to cigarettes to punish her. That made me turn to cigarette to punish her. It's only hurting me now. It's only hurting me now. It's hurting me being angry at her. It's hurting me being angry at her. And I remember how sad and angry I was at 13. And I remember how sad and angry I was at 13. That my own mother wouldn't believe me. That my own mother didn't want to believe me. I felt so sad and angry. I felt so sad and angry. My mother should have believed me. My mother should have believed me. She still doesn't believe me. She still doesn't believe me. And I'm still trying to get back at her by smoking. And I'm still trying to get back at her in, by smoking. But it's only hurting me. But it's only hurting me. I wonder if I can stop hurting me. I wonder if I can stop hurting me. I'm not really punishing her. I'm not really punishing her. Mm -hmm. So just take a deep breath. And with everything that I've just said then, 
what's coming up for you right now when you think about the 13 year old and you know finally telling mum what had happened when you were eight years old and her not believing you and being angry at you and you being angry at her and then like trying to punish her by smoking I feel like it is still stuck in my in my throat. So what is it that's stuck in your throat? The anger that she didn't believe you and, or, and that she was angry with you? The, the, it's not the anger, it's the fact it's not being recognized. Not being recognized, not being believed. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And what's that out of 10? It's a 10. <laughs> Even though I have this 10 out of 10 feeling in my throat. Even though I have this 10 out of 10 feeling in my throat. I feel not recognized. I feel not recognized. Not understood. Not understood. And I feel it in my throat. And I feel it in my throat. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. And uh, it relates back to being 13 and telling mum that trauma that happened when I was eight. And it's related to when I was 13 years old and telling my mum about this eight-year-old trauma and she didn't believe me. I accept myself and the way my throat has held on to this emotion. I accept my throat and the way it's held on to this emotion. But it doesn't serve me anymore. But it doesn't serve me anymore. And I want to release it. And I want to release it. Even though I still have this 10 out of 10 emotion in my throat. Even though I still have this 10 out of 10 emotion in my throat. That goes back to being 13. That goes back to being 13. I wasn't recognized or understood. I wasn't recognized or understood. When I told my mum what had happened when I was eight. When I told my mum when I what told happened? my mum when what happened when I was eight. And she didn't believe me. And she didn't believe me. And she still doesn't believe me. And she still doesn't believe me. I accept myself and the way my body has held on to this. I accept myself and the way my body has held on to this. To protect me in some way. To protect me in some way. But it's time to let it go. But it's time to let it go. All of this emotion in my throat. All of this emotion in my throat. That started when I was 13. That started when I was 13. When I told my mum what had happened when I, when I was eight. When I told my mum what happened when I was eight. And she didn't believe me. And she didn't believe me. She even got angry with me. She even got angry with me. And I felt disappointed that I wasn't recognised. And I felt disappointed that I wasn't recognised. That she didn't believe me. That she didn't believe me. And I feel all of this emotion in my throat. And I feel all of this emotion in my throat. I was angry that I and disappointed that she didn't recognize me. I was angry and disappointed that she didn't want to recognize me. Or acknowledge what had happened to me. Nor acknowledge what happened to me. And part of me wanted to get back at her and punish her by smoking. And part of me wanted to get back at her by smoking. And that 13-year-old anger is still that, keeping me smoking. And my 13-year-old uh, start smoking makes me still smoking. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to that 13-year-old me. So I want to talk to that 13-year-old me. I want to let her know that 
smoking's only hurting her, not mum. I want to let her know that smoking is only hurting her, not mum. And I know she's telling the truth. And I know she is telling the truth. And I recognize her. And I recognize her. And I understand her. And I understand her. And I let her know she's a brave little girl for telling the truth. And I let her know that she is a brave girl telling the truth. And I believe her. And I believe her. Even if mum doesn't. Even if mum doesn't. I believe her. I believe her. And I let her know it's time to let go of all that emotion out of her throat. And I let her know that it's time to let go of all these emotions in her throat. Of not feeling recognized. Of not feeling recognized. Of all the anger. Of all the anger. Of not being believed. Of not being believed. It's time to let it all go now. It's time to let it all go now. She's only hurting herself. She's only hurting herself. And I don't want her to hurt herself anymore. And I don't want her to hurt herself anymore. Maybe it's time to stop smoking. Maybe it's time to stop smoking. Because we're both worth it. Because we're both worth it. Mm -hmm. So take a deep breath. So how's that 13-year-old feeling now? Mum didn't believe her. Mum got angry at her. She's okay. Cool. She's she, was a, she was a brave little girl to say what had happened, right? Mm -mm. And you believe yeah. her. Yeah. And so... I mean, obviously, you know, the trauma that what happened is a whole nother subject and we can work on that another time. But I want you to pick up your cigarette right now and smell it. What is it out of 10 that you want to light it up right now like you did before we started? You have to think about it now. Four was straight away 10 out of 10. <laughs> it's only a four, even lower. I don't know if I really want to smoke it. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. So do you have a lighter nearby? Yeah. Smell the lighter. Do the flicking of it. Yeah. And then, you know, imagining lighting the cigarette is it still for maybe less. I feel like throwing up. <laughs> Don't do that, please. <laughs> so what's that feeling? It's like not really wanting to do it. Yeah, it's strange. I hope it will last. <laughs> Even though. Even though. It feels strange. It feels strange. That I don't want to light that up 10 out of 10 right now. That I don't want to light this cigarette out of 10 right now. And then maybe it's four or less and it makes me feel sick. And maybe it's four or less and it makes me feel sick. And I'm not sure if it's going to last. And I'm not sure if it's going to last. But it's weird to feel like this because I don't usually feel like this. But it's weird to feel like this because I don't usually feel like this. 
I accept myself and the way I feel right now. I accept the way I feel right now. And I'm open to it lasting. I'm open to it lasting. Even though I don't know if it's going to last. Even though I don't know if it's going to last. But right now, it's only four out of ten that I want that. But right now, it's only four out of ten that I want it right now. Because I know it only hurts me. Because I know it only hurts me. And it really makes me want to throw up. And it really makes me want to throw up. I'm open to the possibility that this is going to last. I'm open to the possibility that it's going to last. And I'm not going to want to pick up those cigarettes 10 out of 10 anymore. And I'm not going to want this cigarette as much, this 10 out of 10 anymore. Mm -hmm. That 13-year-old and I are worth more than that. That 13-year-old and I are worth more than that. I was angry when I was eight that my parents smoked when I knew it was bad for them. I was angry at eight when my parents uh, smoked because I knew it was bad for them. And maybe that eight-year-old is telling me, it's bad for me, don't smoke. And maybe that eight-year-old is telling me, it's bad for me, don't smoke. And I think that eight-year-old, me. And I think that eight-year-old me. For telling me it's bad for me and not to smoke. For telling me it's bad for me and not to smoke. And I let that eight-year-old know, me know. And I let that eight-year-old me know. That I'm going to come back in time and help her. That I'm going to come back in time and help her. About the trauma that she went through. About the trauma that she went through. But not right now. But not right now. But I promise her I'll be back. But I promise her I'll be back. Because she deserves the help. Because she deserves the help. And I'm going to help her. And I'm going to help her. And I'll be back to do that another time. And I'll be that back to do that another time. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Freedom. Beautiful. And obviously we will work with that eight-year-old another time. Mm -hmm. Work with the trauma. Yep. So pick up the cigarette again. Smell it. Flick your lighter. No. Nope. <laughs> I love it. Well done. Well done, Beatrice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>